Move it transfer vulnerability exploited by hackers. Number second, unpatched IBM Aspera fastback file transfer service under ActiveAttack. Third, exploit released for Go Anywhere file transfer zero day flow. Every year, millions of dollars are lost and thousands of enterprises and individuals are impacted due to vulnerabilities in file sharing systems. More specifically speaking, network file sharing systems with large volume and velocity of data is continuously moved and stored hundreds of times every second between thousands of connected nodes, servers and computers. Hello everyone and welcome back to Simply Learn YouTube channel. In today's video, we will discuss what are network file sharing system exploits, how they work and how to prevent them. It is very important for cybersecurity enthusiasts, professionals and students to be aware of network file sharing systems as it forms the backbone of every enterprise and organizations across the globe. And before we begin, if you are someone who is interested in building a career in cybersecurity by graduating from the best universities, or a professional who elicits to switch careers with cybersecurity by learning from the experts, then try giving a shot to Simply Learn's postgraduate program in cybersecurity with modules from MIT Schwarzman College of Engineering. The course link is mentioned in the description box below. If these are the types of videos you would like to watch, then hit the subscribe button, like and press on the bell icon to never miss on further content. So stay tuned with us until the end of this video and don't forget to register your opinion in the comment section below. And here we start with what is network file sharing. So network file sharing is a process by which two or more computers on a network can access, share and collaborate on files that are stored on a central location such as a server or a shared folder. It typically involves a combination of network protocols, access controls and authentication mechanisms. By using network file sharing, users can work together on projects or store and retrieve data from a central location without having to physically copy or transfer files from one device to another. This can improve productivity and reduce cost by reducing the need for physical storage devices such as flash drives or external hard drives. Now we will see the types of network file sharing. So there are two main types of network file sharing that is direct file sharing and distribute file sharing. So first we will see direct file sharing. So it's a method of sharing files between two or more computers over a network. Without the use of a dedicated server or storage device, files are typically shared over a local area network that is LAN or wide area network WAN using protocols such as file transfer protocol FTP, simple file transfer protocol SFTP or the common internet file system CIFS. And the next type of network file sharing is that is distributed file sharing. So it involves a central storage device such as a server or a network attached storage device that multiple clients can access over a network. The clients can access and modify the files stored on the server and the changes are automatically saved to the server. Distributed file sharing is a popular method of sharing files in enterprise environments as it allows multiple users to access and use the same file simultaneously without the need for manual sharing or copying of files between devices. Examples of distributed file sharing systems include Microsoft File Server, Novell Netware and Sun Microsystems Network File System NFS. And we have another type of network file sharing that is Content Delivery Network CDN. So CDNs are a type of distributed network that consists of servers located around the world that cache and deliver web content to users with high speed and low latency. CDNs are often used to improve the performance and scalable delivery of web applications as well as to reduce server load and bandwidth cost. They work by caching and delivering content from edge locations that are closer to users. Reducing the need for users to access content from original source and reducing the distance the content needs to travel over the internet. As a result, CDNs can provide high-speed delivery of content to users and reduce the server load of the origin server, reducing bandwidth cost and it's a powerful method for delivering web content, images and videos and is used by many companies to distribute their software updates, media content and applications. And now moving on, we will see what is network file sharing exploit. So it refers to vulnerabilities that allow attackers to gain unauthorized access to files or services on a network. These attacks can be particularly dangerous because they often involve taking control of sensitive resources such as user accounts, financial information or intellectual property. And to better understand network file sharing exploits, it's important to have a basic understanding of computer security. So here are some key concepts to know. First, we'll start with the key concepts and the first key concept is operating system. So an operating system is a software program that manages resources on a computer. It is responsible for controlling hardware components such as the CPU, memory and storage 
and coordinating the execution of software applications. And the next is network protocols. So network protocols are sets of rules that govern communication between computers on a network. Some examples of network protocols include HTTP, which powers the web, SMB, server message block, and NFS, network file system. Then we have another key concept that is authentication. Authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user or system before granting access to resources. This can be done using methods such as passwords, tokens, or biometric authentication. The next concept is authorization. Authorization is the process of determining whether a user or system has the necessary permissions to access a resource. This can be done using access controls such as user roles, permissions, or access policies. The next we have is exploitation. Exploitation is the act of taking advantage of a vulnerability in software or a system to gain unauthorized access or control. This can involve techniques such as buffer overflows, cross-site scripting, and malware. Network file sharing exploits take advantage of vulnerabilities in the network protocols or authentication mechanisms used by computers to share files or resources on a network. For example, an attacker may exploit a vulnerability in the SMB protocol to gain access to a remote file share. So at a high level, network file sharing exploits can be broken down into several stages. And now we will see that stages, how these hackers break into the file sharing and to exploit it. So the first is penetration testing. Before attackers can exploit the vulnerabilities, they must first identify them. So this may involve techniques such as port scanning, vulnerability assessment and social engineering. The next is exploitation. Once the attacker has identified the vulnerabilities, they can attempt to exploit them to gain access to the network or a specific resource. This may involve using specialized attack tools or writing a custom exploit for a specific vulnerability. And the next is escalation. Once the attacker has gained access to a network or a resource, they may need to escalate their privileges to access more sensitive information or to execute more advanced attacks. This may involve methods such as privilege escalation, credential theft, or lateral movement. Next we have is privilege escalation. If the attacker can gain access to an administrative account, or a service account with high privileges. They can potentially execute more advanced attacks. This may involve modifying system settings, creating new user account, or installing malware. The next concept is data exfiltration. So this is a stage, note the concept. Once the attacker has gained control of sensitive data, they may attempt to exfiltrate it, either by uploading it to a remote server or by stealing it using removable media. And the next thing they do is clean up. After the attack, the attacker may try to cover their tracks by deleting logs, disabling monitoring tools, or modifying system settings. This is often done to make it more difficult for administrators to identify and investigate the incident. So to protect against network file sharing exploits, it is important to implement through security measures such as regular patching, strong access controls, and effective logging and monitoring. It is also important to train employees to be aware of potential threats to report suspicious activity and to follow established security protocols. And now we'll see some examples of network file sharing exploits. The first is SMB, Server Message Block. So it's a file sharing protocol used by Windows operating system. It has been the target of several high profile vulnerabilities, including Eternal Blue and Blue Keep. So these are the attacks that have been done. Attackers can use these vulnerabilities to execute arbitrary code on a remote computer, potentially leading to account takeover, data theft, or other malicious activities. The next is FTP, File Transfer Protocol. It's another file sharing protocol commonly used on the internet. It is often used to transfer files between servers and clients. However, it is also prone to several vulnerabilities, including the ability to execute remote commands, modify files, or steal sensitive information. The next is NFS, Network File System. It's a file sharing protocol used primarily on Unix-based systems. Like SMB and FTP, NFS has also been the target of several high-profile vulnerabilities, including a vulnerability that allowed attackers to execute arbitrary code on remote system. The next we have is RCE, that stands for Remote Code Execution, which refers to a type of vulnerability that allows attackers to execute arbitrary code on a remote system. It is often associated with network file sharing that exploits and can lead to serious consequences, including account takeover, data theft, or other malicious activities. Now we'll see some reasons why network file sharing exploits occur. 
So the first is weak authentication mechanisms. Weak authentication mechanisms in network file sharing protocols can be exploited by attackers to gain unauthorized access to sensitive files. Common vulnerabilities include default or easily guessable passwords, unencrypted authentication credentials, and brute force attacks. Implementing strong authentication mechanisms such as two-factor authentication and enforcing password complexity is crucial to prevent unauthorized access. Now we will see the vulnerability too, that is misconfigured permissions. So misconfigured permissions on shared files and directories can lead to unintended access and data leakage. Attackers can exploit this vulnerability and gain access to confidential information or modify critical files. It is important to regularly review and update permissions ensuring that only authorized users have appropriate access rights. Additionally, implementing access control list can provide granular control over file permissions. Now we will see the vulnerability 3 that is lack of encryption. So network file sharing protocols that transmit data in plain text expose sensitive information to eavesdropping and interception. Attackers can capture network traffic and extract confidential data without detection. Implementing encryption such as Transport Layer Security TLS or Secure Shell SSH ensures that data is encrypted during transmission, preventing unauthorized access and data tampering. Now we'll see the vulnerability 4 that is malware distribution. Network file sharing can serve as a vector for malware distribution. Attackers can upload infected files to shared directories spreading malware across the network. Users who download these files unknowingly introduce malware into their systems. Regularly scanning shared files for malware using up-to-date antivirus software and educating users about safe file sharing practices are essential to prevent malware infections. So now we'll see some examples of popular network file sharing exploits that have occurred over the years. The first is Eternal Blue. Eternal Blue was a high-profile vulnerability in Microsoft Server Message Block (SMB) file sharing protocol that allowed attackers to take control of vulnerable systems remotely. It has been used to launch several high-profile cyber attacks, including the WannaCry ransomware attack in 2017. And the next is BlueKeep, another SMB vulnerability BlueKeep that is affected Windows operating system and allowed attackers to gain control of vulnerable systems remotely. It was discovered in 2019 and could potentially affect millions of systems. The next we have is Samba Cry. Another SMB vulnerability, Samba Cry, that allowed attackers to take control of unpatched system, turning the open source Samba file, Samba file, you can say Samba or Samba, it's up to you. So it was discovered in 2019 and could potentially affect millions of systems that rely on Samba. And the next we have is Heartbleed. So Heartbleed was a serious vulnerability in the open SSL cryptographic software library that allowed attackers to steal sensitive information from victim systems. It affected millions of websites and applications and was widely exploited when it was initially discovered in 2014. And the next we have is Shellshock. So Shellshock was a serious vulnerability in the bash cell that allowed attackers to execute arbitrary commands on vulnerable systems. It affected systems running Linux and Unix-based operating system and could potentially affect millions of systems. It was discovered in 2014 and was widely exploited. So this was the attacks or these was the attacks that network file sharing exploits and that happened and these were the popular ones. And in conclusion, what I have to say is that network file sharing is a convenient way to share files and collaborate. But it also introduces vulnerabilities that can be exploited by attackers. So to protect sensitive data and maintain the integrity of the network, it is crucial to implement strong authentication mechanisms, regularly review and update permissions, encrypt network traffic, and educate users about safe file sharing practices. By addressing these vulnerabilities, organizations can mitigate the risk associated with network file sharing. And this was all for this tutorial. And now let's take a minute to hear from our learners who have experienced massive success in their careers. Hi, I'm Philip. I'm 61 years old and last year I upskilled with Simply Learn's postgraduate program in cybersecurity after working 30 years in the IT sector in various different profiles. I'm happy to tell you that I was able to clear and pass my CISSP and CCSP certification exams on the first attempt after taking the course. The course, I must say, was packed with practical examples and was led by highly skilled certified instructors. I worked with many companies before as a security analyst and architect on a contract basis, but I needed some stability, which I got 
with the job I just started with Infosys as a cybersecurity consultant. Happened after I took the course. But first and foremost, I've been a learner. Be a learner first. And if you like this session, then like, share and subscribe. If you have any questions, then you can drop them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts, choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.